the meeting. Right. So um, good afternoon one more time. Uh, so this is the second in the series that we are having on um, a questionnaire design using Cobo Collect. And so today we'll take it a step further and just look at you know some of the advanced features that we could do with um, uh, with the Cobo Collect uh, uh, questionnaire design. And so mostly today we we'll work with the XLS form, uh, which is the Excel version of the form that uh, that we have. Um, but before we could um, go into that, let's just take a moment to recap on what we looked at uh, last time around. So what we said was um, that you know Cobo Collect is a toolbox. Uh, Cobo toolbox rather is a, is a suit of, uh, of free software that you could use to design your questionnaire, and it is available for, for anyone to use. Uh, you just have to create an account, and it has um, a free use. And we did talk about the different types of uh, server accounts that you could use, the humanitarian server or the non-humanitarian servers. And that in functionality, the two servers are not different. Um, one allows you to, uh, the humanitarian server allows you to make unlimited submissions, uh, but the non-humanitarian servers allows you to make uh, 30,000 submissions per, per month. Uh, but with that said, you're also given 5 GB of um, of, of storage space per month to use, which is still a lot considering that most of the uh, data that you collect uh, uh, using the form is, uh, is, is mainly text. And for you to fill up 5 GB of data with text, it's, it's, it's really a lot. And, and then we had a look at some of the basic functionalities of um, you know, the form builder uh, using the home screen and what different elements of the form are, are there. And then we had a look at the different types of questions that you can design the uh, Cobo toolbox, how you could delete and how you can order your question. Uh, we also looked at you know, aspects of uh, grouping some of the questions and uh, making sure that you know the flow of those questions are associated with different um, types of um, um, characteristics. We also looked at uh, how to develop a skip logic uh, so that you can skip uh, automatically certain questions based on the input that you provide for previous questions. And then we also looked at you know, how to input a validation criteria so that responses that are outside a certain specified uh, criteria are not accepted in, uh, in, in the, in, um, during data collection. We also looked at you know, cascading select uh, for choice filter, where, for example, a typical one is where someone selects a province and then only districts that are associated with that province is um, actually the next question. Or if someone selects a, a certain choice in the choice a filter, certain answer in one question, those answers are the ones that will be shown in the, in the next question. And, and of course, we did uh, look at how to group questions. And we finished off by basically designing the, uh, the form. And that's the form that we're going to use uh, today. And I hope this kind of like refreshes your memory on um, what we did last week. And if at any time you have any questions, please do feel free to ask. So moving on to what we'll do today, um, as we did previously mention, Cobalt Toolbox builds its form uh, using what is widely known as uh, the XLS form. So basically, this form makes it possible for you to make complex forms um, in Excel, uh, which is, of course, a spreadsheet program that you use. So this standard Excel S form <laughs> is created simply by authoring forms in, in Excel, and it, it becomes easier for you to actually read through the questions and try and figure out how uh, to add complex uh, skip patterns and and another functionality that are not inherently available in uh, the, the form design functionality of Cobo Toolbox. So the form then makes it easy for you to get around all those uh, complexities that you might wish to have. So the form, and we download it from the server as we go through the practical aspects of it, is simply a, a workbook that has a three worksheets. And mainly these are the survey, the choices, and uh, the settings uh, uh, worksheets that you, you will have. And so the, 
the surveys worksheet basically gives you the overall structure and content of, of your form. Uh, so it will contain the full list of, of questions and information about how the form would appear during your data collection process. And each row in the Excel X level form will represent a response or a question that, that you will have. And so the service worksheet basically will have uh, three mandatory um, columns that are required for, you, for, the, for the form to be functional. And these are the ones that are shown here. So you, of course, will have the type, which specifies the type of questions that you're adding. And we looked at these different types of questions previously. So this could be your date, or it could be your text field. It could be your integer that accepts uh, whole numbers. Or it could be a select one uh, multiple choice question or a select multiple uh, question. And then the next mandatory question that column rather that is required is the name a column which specifies the unique uh, variable name for that question. And so I want to emphasize the word unique because for every variable that you develop in the question, it has to be unique, but should not be duplicated. And when you try to duplicate, uh, especially in your, in your Excel form, uh, it will decline when you try to upload it to your server. But when you're designing your form using the form builder, it will just add an, you know, an appendix. So if, for example, uh, you have uh, in this example that we have here, you have, um, let me just put a pointer. So if, for example, your variable name is today and you create another variable today, it will add a 001 at the end. And if there's another variable called today, it will add a 002 at, uh, at the end. Um, but in the XLS form, uh, when you try to upload it and if you have duplicate variables, uh, it, will, it will refuse for you. So you just need to make sure that your variables are, are unique. And so the variable name, can contain letters, digits, hyphens, or underscores, and, and even periods. But when you put um, a number at the beginning, it will be converted into an underscore. So oftentimes, you want to make sure that you put your number at the end. And I'd also want to emphasize that you know variable names are case sensitive. So if you write today, uh, for example, in the example that we have here, uh, with a capital T, and then when you're using the core function, you use as a lowercase t to fail to find uh, that variable name because it is case sensitive. So whenever you're writing, make sure that you have your variables um, um, in lowercase as it were, or if you have I mean, in uppercase, whichever works, works for you. And then the last uh, mandatory column that you of course have is what is called the label um, uh, column. And this basically will show you the text of the question as it will appear on, on the questionnaire. And don't worry so much about this because once you download the form, we'll again go through these columns and uh, just explain to you. And, and then you can have several other columns as you will see when we go uh, through the, the questionnaire um, uh, that can be added. Uh, for example, you could have a relevant question that to show you your skip logic. You could have uh, a required um, feel that to show you if one question is mandatory and so on and, and, and so forth. And so we'll look at all these different other questions that, uh, that are created. Uh, so for the most part, when you design your questionnaire using a uh, form builder and copper toolbox, most of these fields will be created automatically. And once you download it, then you can just um, edit or add extra fields that you might require um, to, to, to develop your form. Um, and of course, these are the question types that we talked of uh, last time around. So the next uh, worksheet that is there in your form will of course be the choices uh, worksheet. So this worksheet is used to specify the answer choices for multiple choice questions. So each row will represent an answer choice and the answer choice will be associated to a certain variable using the list name. So in the example that we have, um, so all the names, the choices that are carrying under the name category, uh, column rather, are associated with the question with the variable name called gender. So wherever the name code 
the, the variable question that has gendered these questions and why that will appear. And if I go back to the previous slide, um, quickly, you can see that uh, row, row number two, select one gender. The question is gender. And then the level for that question, the actual question is uh, respondents gender. And so the respondents gender, the option that will appear in the question will be transgender, female, male, and, and other. And these are the labels that will, uh, that will appear. And uh, we'll go through this in, in more detail as we, as we download the form, as I've been saying. Um, and so um, similar to the survey form, um, the worksheet also has three mandatory fields that have to be there, and then other add-ons that you could add to to, to the worksheet. So the first, of course, is the list name. So this is the group, the grouping uh, um, that you use to group choices together for, for a question as I did explain earlier on. So all those questions that will have the same list name will appear under that variable name with, with that list. The next uh, in mandatory field that should be there in your question is of course the name. And this is of course the unique uh, choice or response or code for that specific um, uh, question. So I, 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 I use the word unique loosely in this regard because you can have later on in a questionnaire, uh, male, female, and, and things like that. But in essence, for each specific question that is, has the same uh, list name, the name, the choice name should, should be unique in in that regard, and uh, as we go through this, um, we'll, we'll explain this and uh, just to emphasize that everyone gets to gets to understand. And the last required name column is label. So these are the choices as they will appear uh, on 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 your form. The last uh, worksheet that will appear in your Excel form is the settings worksheet. Um, so this is highly recommended to specify the form title, the form ID, and the form version. And these will, of course, be, um, be mandatory. And basically, they, they'll be required for you to uh, give a title to your form, uh, to give an ID, uh, each of those forms, because it needs to have a unique ID and a version number. But if you started off creating your form from, um, uh, from from your form builder and Cobra toolbox, and these ones will be automatically created for you. Or even if you don't create it in your specific form, um, once you upload it, to ask you to enter this information. And for the most part, the form ID and the form version will be created uh, by default uh, on the on the form um, once you upload your, your your form onto the onto the website. And then you have several other add-on columns uh, that you can further use to customize your form. So some of these are, for example, your instance name. So by default, each submission that you make onto your server is called an instance. And you can customize it um, in such a way that you want it, but you don't want to stress yourself. You just use the generic names that will appear on, on your form. And then there is, uh, default language, you can also specify in instances where you want to translate your, your language uh, and, and then other text in your, in your form are in English. And then you also have what is called a public key. So this one is used to encrypt your form if you want to have your, your, your data encrypted so that not everyone can access your data on, on the form. And I might also just add that you know, once I share these presentations, um, you can click on the links that are provided in the, in the presentation to just go to specific more details on um, uh, some of the information that is uh, highlighted here for, for you. And you have also, I think, the submission URL. There are certain instances where you don't want to use the default uh, Cobo Toolbox server and you want to use your own server. You can add a column, uh, submission URL, and then provide the link where once someone submits the data, the data will go to instead of it going to the default uh, um, uh, Cobalt toolbox um, uh, servers. So those are kind of like the general uh, overview that is there for the form. Um, uh, do we have any questions this far? 
I hope everyone can hear me okay and you're feeling uh, all right. Okay, if not, we can move along. Um, so there are certain times that you want to style or to format your, your form and um, the XLS form supports uh, limited use of, uh, of Markdown and the specific uses mainly are um, to make letters bold or italics, uh, to give headers different uh, sizes and also to give colors um, and fonts uh, to your text and also to create a clickable uh, web link. So uh, I have provided a link here, which you can click on and um, to basically guide you through some of the um, uh, options that are there for you to just move the page a little bit. Yeah, so it will provide you with options, just uh, some of the settings that you can use for um, uh, for formatting your, your your questionnaire. And we'll, we'll try maybe one or two uh, options for uh, for formatting. Um, this is a very good link that you can learn on how to do basic coding in your in, in, for your for your questionnaire. So. Uh, and of course, I've provided more links here for you to read on, um, on, on, on basic formatting of, uh, of the questionnaire. I think with that said, we can now move and uh, look at the practical aspects. Uh, we have uh, several practical aspects. So before we go through one aspect of, uh, of that practical, we'll go through the theory and then uh, go back to the form, make changes and then uh, see how, how that goes. Um, so, May I ask if people were following along last time when I was developing the form? Did you develop your own form following along with what Mangala did last time around? Hello? Can you hear me? Hi, Warren. Yes, we did. Um, okay, great. That was John. I wasn't on last time, so I can't comment, but I'm just following. But did others, in addition to John, follow along and make the form? Hello. Hi, Warren. Sorry, this is Monga. Last time I was out in the field, but then um, I was working on my phone, so I didn't manage to. I followed along on my phone, but I didn't follow along on the PC. Okay. All right. Um, that's fine. I think what I'll do is then I'll I'll have to share the form with, with everyone. Um, so maybe let's just do a quick overview. Um, let me just save it. Um, let me do a quick overview of the form, and then we can uh, we can share it with everyone so that everyone can import it in um, onto their account. Where, Dr. Munga, were you able to create a Cobo Collect account? So, sorry, the button was frozen. Yes, I was able to, uh, to create an account. Perfect. Start to hear. So um, this is more of your home, uh, your home screen for, for a specific form. We did say that uh, this will be your project. And today we're going to use the library and see how the library actually works with, uh, with the questions. And then this shows you your, the questions that you've deployed, the questions that you have in draft form that you haven't deployed. And if there are any questions that, questionnaires rather, or forms that you've decommissioned, they will appear under the, uh, the archive. Uh, uh, archived uh, a tab. So this is the questionnaire that uh, Mwangala developed last week. Um, basically looking at uh, the IFE uh, of COVID vaccine and just uh, quickly having a, a preview. And so if someone consents, then it gives them all those, all those questions. Um, 
So this guy, that's, that's the font that we use. So um, some of the key icons that we talked about last time is uh, to edit your film build, form builder rather, um, the pencil icon, the eye icon to preview, um, well, the double arrow, rotating arrows, uh, placing your form, and then you have more actions here. So what you want to do is basically to download um, the form that we designed as an XLS form. And so all that I have to do is to click there and then it will download there an Excel version of that form. So my previous experience has been that sometimes even when you click it, for some reason it appears not to be responsive. And so you have to long click or right click on it. Um, and, and then finally find its way of, uh, of, of downloading the of downloading the form. Um, and that's the one that is showing here. Right. So let's just go through some of the aspects that we talked about uh, earlier on. So I have multiple versions of the form just put on. I need to close that. Let me see in the documents. Uh, that's just something I was working on earlier on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So this basically is your entire form. So as I did say, it will have three tabs, work, worksheets. So you have your survey form. Uh, here you have your choices form there, and you have your settings form there. And as we did say, form title is that, and then it's version number two, and that is the time that that version was, was deployed. So let's have a look at um, the, the survey form. This we said will contain all your, uh, your questions as they appear. Um, so the type specifies the type of question that it is. By default, there is what is called metadata, and we'll talk about it later on, that is collected by the form. So one of the metadata, elements that is collected is the start and end time uh, of your data collection process. And so these will often appear as your start and, and end fields. Um, so this is some of the metadata information that is collected on, on the form. And then um, maybe what I need to do is to show this side by side so that people can pull along um, um, much easily. Okay. That would be better, let me do that. Right. And then what we have is we have a note here. Remember the type of question, it's a note. And then the name is called introduction, um, which is that. Uh, and the label that appears is just introduction, which is this level that you're currently seeing on, on the questionnaire. Um, uh, it doesn't have any hint. It's not a required field. And then we'll talk about these uh, calculations and and so on later on. Um, then the next that we have is uh, select one, and then there's this unique ID here that is uh, provided. Um, the, the name, variable name, so these we left them deliberate. We are going to do coding today, uh, developing a code book, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll explain how to change these variable names, because right now, the way they appear, they appear awkward. They're based, they are based on the label that you created. So what you to do to just pick the specific number of characters from the label that you've, that you've created. So it, it looks awkward that way, but we'll have to add variables later on as we do in the second half of the lecture, as we look at the, uh, the coding process uh, for your questionnaire. So the variable name is consent, uh, and this is consent as it appears. But here on the type of question, the select one, and it tells us that this is where it's going to find the choices, the yes and no, as it appears here. And for you to find what those choices are, you have to go to your choices question and your list name, which is a variable name, right? Uh, which is that, is what you have here. Right. Uh, so let me just highlight this for you, is what you have uh, there. So it has a one and a two, and then the labels that are appearing is a yes and a no. So basically if someone, someone clicks yes, 
and we don't know that data, what will appear will be a one because that's a code that has been assigned to uh, this question. And if someone answers a no, what will appear is, is a two um, as, as we've assigned to that question, right? So let's click yes. Um, and we go back to the, to the, to the uh, survey tab. And here you have a group that begins, right? Group begin, and if you remember, let me go back to, uh, to the question. So this is where your group begins, right? Um, this is your group, and this is what it does. Group begin, that's the group unique name. We didn't change the group unique name. This is as it appears here, and we'll change this later on. And that is the label, which is this one here that will appear under, under the label. Um, and then it tells you that it's not a required field. If you check on your logic, um, just one moment. Um, okay, this one doesn't have a required field, but it has a relevant question, which is really simply a logic, right? So it tells you constant should be equal to yes. And this is what you have, a dollar sign and the variable constant, which is uh, this one here, right? This is a variable name for, um, for this consent. Uh, and we we'll change this uh, later on in the question. Um, it has to be uh, to be selected equal to one. So someone should select uh, basically a yes uh, for this group to, to appear. So basically that's how you read your, 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 your question. And then you have your text. What is your name? This is a text question. Uh, that is the variable name that will change. And then this is the label as it appears here. Right, um, just one moment. What is your name, right? And the variable name that looks required is, is exactly this one here and we change it. And the label, which is this one there. Um, and then it has a hint, right? Hint, enter the name of the respondent, which is the one that is appearing there. Um, and then it's an open field, it's not required, so it doesn't have a relevant, uh, it doesn't have any calculation. So basically that's how you read your, your question. So let's look at another example. Uh, integer, um, what is your sex? Uh, and details are select one, bn, that's the variable name for, for the choices. And if you go there, you'll find that it is these two fields here. So you have male or female uh, that are appearing under the, the choices that, that, that you, you have. Um, which other interesting element? And once you are done with the group, uh, you have your end group uh, ID there, and then another group begins and so on and, and so forth. Um, does anyone have a question? Is anything? Not clear to anyone before I move on. Yeah, awfully quite class. <laughs> yeah, um, right. So let me look at what other interesting aspects would be there. So let's look at, um, let me freeze these layers so that we can see the titles. There. Right. I just want to look at, um, so an, an example of uh, um, whether someone is pregnant, question number six, are you pregnant? It has, a relevant, which is simply what is called a logic uh, model, a logic, a skip logic. And uh, this question will only appear if female is selected for question number, question number two. Right. So that's how you basically read your, read your, your questionnaire. So I'll, I'll post this on the WhatsApp group so that those that don't have it, uh, would have it, and then we'll make a few edits to uh, to the form so that it's clear for for everyone. Um, so let me stop sharing for a moment, and then I can post it on the WhatsApp group uh, for those that don't have it.
Right. So I've um I've posted some things on uh in the WhatsApp group um, for you. To have a look at. And so the first thing that we're going to do today uh, <clears throat> with using the form uh, is of course downloading the form which I'll show you how to do it. You just have to click on the more options and then download your form as an Excel form and then it will be downloaded and you can make all those edits to, to your form. Um, Um, so, uh, one of the styling or formatting options that we're going to do today is what is called adding uh, various media to, to the form. So, the XLF, XLS form supports additional visual or audio media uh, to your form. So, this works both in the uh, Android uh, Cobo Collect app or as well as the online web forms are in actual form that uh, are there. So you can only add pictures or audios, uh, but it does not support uh, GIF uh, format that are animated um, uh, videos. So for you to basically do this is you need to download the form and then create and save the media that you want to add uh, with short names and then create, add a column um in both your survey and choices tab uh, work, uh, worksheet so if you're only adding it to the question itself you should only add it to the column uh, to the survey tab but if you also want a question, question uh, an option or a choice to show um, a figure or an audio or a visual uh, then you have to add the column uh, written as uh, audio uh, double column image in the choices tab as well. And then you add names of the media uh, to those specific questions or choices where you want those images to, to appear. Um, as I did say, the names that you add to the Excel form should match the file names that you have saved on your, uh, saved for your images, or else when you upload them, uh, it will fail to link uh, those uh, file, uh, uh, files into the form. And then you upload your form uh, to the project, and then you uh, save the image uh, via what is called the project setting tab where you can upload them to, to the form as well. And then you can redeploy your form and your, uh, your uh, various media will, will appear. So I've shared um, the form with you and I've also shared three images um, that we're going to upload on, on the form uh, today. So let me just share my screen. I'm sharing just one portion of the screen. Then I can show you the different um, steps that we talked about. So I'll go ahead and open my form. Uh, so, so we've already downloaded the form and I believe you also have a copy of the form. So once we've downloaded the form, what we need to do is to add another field. So it really doesn't matter where that field is added as long as the three mandatory fields are there and then it will basically uh, try and find the other, the other options. But I really like to add it between the fields that are already existing so that I'm sure that it is, it is uh, those new fields are being collected, are being picked rather. So I'll go to column G and then right click and then say insert. And then I'm going to insert a column. Um, let's see if I a column called media, double colon image. Uh, there, right? And so what we want is we want to show the image of the, um, the FTP logo, like it is for a number of the forms that we've shared previously. And the logo wanted to appear together with the 
introduction. So I'm going to look at how the name is saved in, in, um, uh, in my file. So I've saved them as such, ftp2.png, and then we'll have a man.png and woman.png. So I'm going to copy this name as it appears here, right? Um, yeah. Just going to copy it exactly as it is. Uh, and I think for WhatsApp, once someone shares the images for you, it, it renames them. So just make sure that you rename them so that it appears as FTP.png. Uh, so I'm adding it to row number four, which is a row for the, uh, for the not. And what I also want to do is I want the, the images for the male and female uh, to appear under male and female here. So what I'll do, I'll go to the choices uh, worksheet and also add media, double colon image. And then I'm going to get the names as they appear um, uh, here. Uh, so we add man there and add uh, woman there. So I've added the wrong field, right? You can see that. So I just go ahead and just move this there. Um, so that's, uh, this is the field and I want them to appear. Uh, yeah, so the man uh, and, and female PNG. So I'll go ahead and save this form. Uh, and then after I save it, uh, you can go to your, uh, to your Copo Collect. So this is the same form that I've downloaded. So all that I want to do is just to replace it. So I'll go here in the home tab for the, for the question. Remember it's deployed, I click on it under the deployed. Um, if it's not deployed, you have to deploy it uh, by just clicking on. Uh, and deploy um, icon over there. Um, so you replace the form and then you say upload an XLS form. I click on it and then click to navigate where the form is saved. It's saved in my downloads folder. Uh, that's where it is and I click open. So it's uploaded the form and the form has been uploaded. And so what I will do is to go to the settings tab and there's an icon called media and it tells me that you know click and drag files here or click here to browse where those forms are saved and the form the files rather are saved in my pictures in cobo for not you in FTP for that and these are the pictures that the three of them and I'll click okay to upload them and I can confirm that they've been uploaded by scrolling down and I can see there's a man PNG, there's a FTP2 PNG and woman.png. Then what I have to do is to go back to the form and redeploy it just to make sure that it is linking and reading um, the form with the media that I've uploaded. And so if I click open, it should be able to yes. read should be able to uh, show the images um, that are there. So usually it asks you this when you're doing the online form. So just discard the record. Um, give it a moment to show that this form has been updated. Um, refresh. Okay, there we go. So you can see that initially we didn't have that image, but right now it is appearing. And if I click yes, and you can see there's an image for the male and for the female. So there is a problem uh, for the female image. Um, that's what that's the reason why it's showing uh, uh, that it is broken. So I just need to check. All right, it's written woman, but I wrote woman, right? Uh, so I just rename that. Um, so just re-emphasizing the point uh, and then go back to the form. Uh, settings, uh, media, I'm going to delete uh, this one, right? And then re-upload the correct form. Open. Right, it's been updated. Redeploy the form. Uh, 
refresh this page. <laughs> Discard the option. Yes, a new version of the form is available. I have to refresh. And this guy, yes, and both the male and female images are appearing on, on the form. Were you guys able to do what I've done? Is anyone failing to do? I'll need some feedback from your end. It was too fast for me. I, I couldn't do it. Okay, perfect. Okay, that's fine. Let's 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 do it one more time just to make sure that everyone is following along. Right. Um, so do you have your Excel um, Excel form open? Yes. So by default, these are the fields that you should have now, right? You have your type, column A, column B, name, column C, label, column D, hint, column E, required, column F, relevant, and column G is a calculation. So what we said is type is the type of question that is there. Name is the unique variable names, and we'll change this um, in the second half of this uh, training. Then we have the label. These are how the questions actually appear in your form. And then hint, if you have any hints for those specific questions. Required, if you want any question to be mandatory. Relevant, this is basically your skip logic. Calculation, if you're doing any calculation for, for the question. So for us to add media to your, to your form, you have to add another field, another column. Um, and you can add it in between or you can add it at the end. The form will still be able to read it. So what you basically want to do is um, to go to an empty column. Uh, you shouldn't have any empty columns between the titles uh, because once it reads between the columns rather, because once it reads that as a blank um, a column, it will disregard the others. So basically you will type in as media, double colon image. So all that we're telling the form is that it should look for a media and link the media to the image that we're going to, to upload to the form. And where we want the image to appear, the FETP image to appear, right, is to appear under the introduction um, and uh, not. And so we go to the, to the not, uh, introduction, right? Uh, the variable name is introduction. And then we go to the specific row under media and provide the name of the media that you're going to upload that you should put under this specific uh, note. Is that clear? And so you have to write it exactly as the media name is. It should be short and you should also include the format of the, of the media. So I'll just rename that and copy, highlight and, and copy. So it's FETP2.png. So that's the format of the, of the image. And I'm going to put that name here. So all that I'm telling the form is once I upload um, some images onto the form in the form builder, I want the image with this name to appear under the introduction um not and this can be on any specific question right you can add it on what is your sex and, and all that so on. Uh, it will appear as long as you specify where it should appear and so this as we said the survey tab is for the questions and then your choices tab is for your choices and so if you want um certain images to also appear for certain choices you can actually do that by going to the choices worksheet and then add the same color media double colon image and then you specify where those images will appear in the example that we have we have uh one moment we have a uh, man gpn 
So I want the image to appear under this choice. And then we have also woman, the GPN to appear under, under this, um, under the, uh, the female choice, right? And then I save that, uh, I save the form as it were. Um, then once I save this, I go back to the form on the server, right? And then I replace the form because I've made changes to it. What I want to do is to just basically replace the form. So I click on replace, upload the form. I could drag and drop the form here, or I could click and browse to where the form is saved. So the form is saved in my downloads folder. I click on it, and then it's uploading the form. And once I upload the form, I need to go to the settings tab and go under the option for, for media. So settings tab, media, and then I specify uh, by clicking. So I'd already up, up, uploaded those uh, medias already, uh, but basically you just have to click here and then navigate to where you save your media. So they should have the same names as the one you specified in the form. Remember they're case sensitive. If you write FETP small letters and they can just basically show you that. Um, and, and, and that's one thing that you have to be mindful uh, for the form FETP. Um, so if, if I delete this image and then upload um, a new image, but it's in small letters, it will not work. So the image has been uploaded. It's fpcp2.gpn. I go to the form and we deploy it just to make sure that that sync happens between the image and the form. And then I I can even preview. Or I could open that. It doesn't matter. If I go and preview. Right, so it gives an error. So it gives a broken image. It can't find. So it's expecting an image here, but it can't find a specific image. But if you check for, for male and female, those specific images are being found uh, because uh, it's able to find the, the image. So it's it's pretty much case sensitive. Um, you have to mind of, of, of that. Right. Um, is is that clear now? Grace. Yeah, it's clear. Then can you go back to the female or male images where you are inserting them in Excel? I've managed to insert them in the Kobo, but then on the row in the Excel. So in the choices uh, tab, worksheet, you have to create another column, a media double colon image, and then you specify them to the specific choices where you want them to, to appear. So in this option, I want them to appear on the on the uh, choices for male and, and female. So that's where I put the name the names for the images that I want to appear under those specific uh, choices. No, oh, thank you. Sure. So I hope uh, you've been able to uh, to upload your images and. And you name them accordingly. So I did share them on the WhatsApp, um, uh, and I hope you name them um, um, short, short names, and those names should be the same, case sensitive, both on your uh, Excel form and uh, even when you upload them uh, onto, onto the server. Right. Um, cascading selects. Um, just one moment. So can you move on now to the next um the next item if, if, if people don't have any questions I can go ahead and and do the cascading select. I 
Hello? I need a response, at least from someone. Yes, yes. Okay, yes, we can. Sure. Thank you. Uh, so uh, for cascading select, we looked at these options um, uh, previously. Um, the typical example that you often use a cascading select question is where you have a, a province or a country, a region, district, and so on and so forth, because there's that linkage. You have that hierarchy that is there um, that you want to create. So you can basically create that um, that hierarchy uh, within our um, uh, Kobo uh, Collect. Um, let me see. I think have I provided a link. No, I can provide a link. There's a template that is already developed uh, that you can use, especially for for districts and and countries and so on. Uh, but I think it's much easier if you know how to do it from scratch. Um, um, uh, because it makes it easier for you to, to actually do the, the more advanced uh, um, uh, formatting. So it's possible within Copa Collect to create just a portion of your questionnaire and then add it to the library and then go to another form and then uh, import a question from the library. So that's what the library is for to import questions across uh, different forms. And um, because there are certain times that you know you have a portion of your form that is malfunctioning and you can't seem to figure it out because it's too long. And so to allow for you to just concentrate on one aspect of the form, you can build this one component of that form. And then once you are sure that it works okay, you keep on adding. And that's how you basically should be doing uh, the more complex form, uh, even for the vaccine technical study. That's how it was done because the, the form was so long. It took us um, quite a while to to develop it right so let's look at the practical aspect of um, of it and we are going to, to build a form from scratch and i hope you're up for it um, so i want you to open um uh, excel so the easiest way that uh, I think is would be easier for you to do is to use an existing um, an existing form. So I have this uh, COVID nineteen vaccine IAFI. I'm just going to rename it and then I delete everything so that I remain with it. Uh, so I'm just going to call it um, uh, cascading select. Um, right, Oops, already exists. <laughs> um, okay. Version one, right? Let's get in select new one. So, what I'll do is I'll delete everything except the uh, row number one. Um, delete, I'll go to the choices. Delete everything except row number two. Delete and go to settings. Remember uh, the form title as heading uh, select uh, version two. Oh, it's version one, right? And that's what the form will be. Um, yeah, I can leave that as it is, or we can call it version version one. Yeah, I just change the version. Okay. So. Um, let's go ahead just uh, right so in the original form the media is already there because i'm going to add these questions as an annex to the form that we developed so i don't need this column so i can go ahead and delete the media uh, column um, and i hope you can see my screen yes yes Okay. So we'll start with the survey. So we said survey um, basically is where the questions will appear. So we want the first question, we want to select the province. So we'll go ahead and say select uh, underscore one, then we're selecting a province. <laughs> so the choices. We want the form to select one province. So we can go to the choices and under the list name, we can have the different provinces. And basically in Zambia, 
we have how many provinces? 10 provinces, right? So case sensitive, I wrote it all in lowercase, so province. Uh, and I'll just drag this down to very under 10 provinces, right? And the provinces that we have is central, uh, copper belt, eastern, Wapulam, Busaka, Muchinda, Muchinda, uh, Northern. North Western. So this the name, remember it's a variable name. Uh, you can take the dashes. Um, North Western. Uh, what's next? Southern and Western, right? That it. And so these are the provinces. And I want so these are the variable names that will appear and I'll show you once you upload the forms how they appear. But the labels, the way they are going to appear in um, the form, usually you want to start a name usually starts with an uppercase. I can go ahead and just copy this uh, or you can use a formula equal to, uh, so there's a formula called proper in Excel where a specific text is written with the first letter as, as uppercase. So it's just a quicker way of me typing all this up. Uh, and then I copy that back as I copy, I highlight, uh, copy, and then I paste it back as, as numbers because what we initially had were formulas. So these actually so on and so forth. So and we don't need this column for, uh, for that one. Any questions? So far, I hope you are able to follow along. So let me just quickly, um, I want to, because we can't spend a lot of time. Um, do, 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 do. I want to send you all the names for that. Yeah. Um, I'll just post them in the in the chat for you. Um, I'm not sure which one is either chat or, or WhatsApp. Maybe chat. Okay. So I've posted them in the chat for you um, so that you don't have to type them. So <laughs> that is the first question. So select one province. So we'll go back to the question. So select one province. So the variable name. For well, province, we we'll call it province, um, and the label, how the question will want it to appear in the form to be one. Uh, select the province. It's, um, we don't want to put a hint for it. And then, asking us whether it's required. It's not a required question. We can put false, or if we want, we can put true. If we want it to be to be true, right? Um, and then the next one is of course select one. So select underscore one district. Uh, district. And the variable name will be district. Uh, question number two, um, select district. Uh, we don't want it to be mandatory, but if we wanted to be mandatory, then we needed to specify these as, uh, as true. Uh, they, should, they should all be uh, lowercase. Um, mm. Mm. 
Right, so if you, if you want them to be required, mm -hmm. then you can change that to um, to, to true. So what we need to do now is to specify mm -hmm. the districts, right? Because here we say this question should select one one district. So we go ahead and specify the, the districts. Um, so district should be the same, right? Uh, specify one district here is what I put as a list name for the district. And I just get that list that I sent you and uh, paste it. Right. Um, so that we have the same problem as, as everyone. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and just highlight them. The names that uh, I've sent to you, and then then I go ahead and just uh, paste them. Right there. So I need to just uh, drag down the name district because these are the districts um, that we want to select, and then the label. I would use the same option where I want the names to appear. The first letter uppercase, so equal to proper um, a little enter Chiombo appear with the uppercase and then just drag the formula down. So everything is written correctly, and then I copy and then paste them as values. Now, this is where the interesting part comes in. So we need to tell the form which province each of these districts belong to. So what we need to do is to get the variable name, list name, province, and create it as a as a column, right? And I hope you're following along. So I've created it as a column under column D, and then I go to the districts and then specify under the, the province column, which province each of these districts belong to beginning with the row number 12, which is, so Chibombo, which province does it belong to? Central, right? So I type central there. So I can drag down, I think, and let me see how geography serves me well. So central is from Chiwongo, Chisamba, Chitambo, Kawe, Kushungago, Serenge. Shibuyunji is under Osaka, right? No, it's under central. So I think central province ends at Shibuyunji. And then the next province, and remember it has to be lowercase because this is the variable name for the province. This is just a label. The one with an uppercase C is a label. Um, uh, but the variable name is what we are uh, following. So Chilawongwe is under copper belt. So you, I copy copper belt uh, and paste it under the uh, variable province. So let me just, um, uh, so that people continue to see my top row. Right, and then, uh, all these dollar up to up to dollar, right? Chadiza is under Eastern Province. All these are under under Copper Belt. Mm. Chadiza is under Eastern, so I copy the name Eastern. Then specify that Chadiza is under the name is the end and drag it down to Vui. Chembe is under Wapula. Copy the name Wapula, lowercase. 
So from Chembe up to Sanfia, it's under Lopula. Chilanga is under Lusaka. Um, so, so Lusaka. Uh, oops, uh, it's too much. <laughs> Uh, until you under Rufunsam. So I want you to note that remember the name, the variable name for each choice should be unique. But what we have here is we have a district called Lusaka and we have a province that is called Lusaka. That is going to create an error for us. So we need to make sure that we distinguish the province from the district. For now, I'll leave it. I'm just telling you I'll leave it so that I can show you how what issues you are going to have when you don't have a unique um, unique ID for your variable. Um, it will fail to upload the form. Um, basically, it will be because of that. Um, Shama is under Shinga. Okay. Uh, it's up to... Shiwangando. And up to Shiwangando. And then Chiluvi is under Northern. Uh, until Senga. Chavuma is and the northwest end. Uh, until Zambezi. Chikankata is under southern. Till Zimba and Kalago is under Western. And this should be our basically our scroll. Right, so I save that work. Um, and then, I hope you can still hear me. Yeah, so we need to provide uh, what is called um, a choice filter, right? Remember, when we're selecting districts, it should be based on the choice that is made on, on the province. So we'll go ahead and add a column code choice underscore filter. And then what we we'll specify for the district is that uh, the province, right, which is this row, should be equal to the dollar sign, and then curly brackets for the province that is selected. So let me explain this. So, this is a choice. So what we're telling you is that when the form comes to populating the choices that should appear for the district question, select district, it should first of all look at the province that each of those choices begin to and only get to select where the province for that specific district is equal to the province that is selected in in the um, in the variable name for um, uh, for question number one, which has the name uh, province. I hope that is clear. Then I go ahead and save this uh, question, and then I'll go ahead now and upload it to uh, to to the uh, to the form. So we we'll basically just create a new blank form. We we'll upload the form. I'll go ahead and click there and go to where the form is saved. 
Done. Version one open. Right. So uh, it's giving us an error, right? Uh, cascading select one error and non type select one district. So we need just to check where the error is from. So we're just making sure that the text is the same. And um, Saka, that was a culprit, right? So we'll just call this Lusaka district. Um, make sure that the choice that we have here, the district that we have here, is exactly the same as the district we have there. Right, so let's try that one more time. Oh. Wow, you see, so I forgot an E. <laughs> so select. Um, there we go. So, as I did say, it's case sensitive. Um, there we go. So cascading select one, that's a question. Remember that's the name that we had um, indicated here. Um, I select one version one. Uh, we'll go ahead and create the project and we can preview the form. Yeah, so, uh, right, so you can see select one province, which is, what we typed here as under the label, that's what it will appear. And if we select uh, central, we have all the provinces for central coming. If we select copper belt, we have all the provinces, district for copper belt coming, Wapula, and so on and so forth. I just want to go to the form and just explain to you how it appears, right? So, um. There were two variables that were indicating in, uh, um, and, and this will bring us to the issues of uh, uh, coding for variables. Remember, we said select one promises the label. This is what appears here. But if you go there and the data column name or the variable province is the name that is appearing there. Um, and for each of these, uh, for each of the promises that you have. The label is what will appear here, but the name is what will appear under, under here, which is your MXL value, what will be exported as, as, as your data. So basically that's how you would, you would, you would code for, for, your, uh, for your questionnaire. So what we need to do now is we can add these questions to, to the library and then import them in the other form. Um, or if you're good with coding, you can go ahead and just code for this question straight away from, from the questionnaire. But I wanted to show you how um, you can build your questionnaire based on different segments. Um, so I add it to the library. So it's question number one, select province, and I add the pro the district as well, so it's added to the library. So I exit that um, and then, go to this question that is uh, the question that we developed and then we edit it. Um, so demographics, did we add province? Yes, we added province here. So it was question number five. Um, so I'll leave it for now and then just show you how to do it. So what I need to do is now click on add from library and then it will populate the questions that are, are from the library. And I'll drag and drop the question for province there, and then um, I, I collapse it, and then also drag question for district uh, there. And then I can go ahead and delete. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, this is question number five. 
I just highlight, copy that, and uh, post it. Paste it there, and then delete that question that we had. And then this one becomes question number six. Um, select well, what is uh, what is your district? Uh, what is your district? Um, any questions, colleagues? That's fine. Um, I hope uh, people have been able to follow along. If you have any specific question, please uh, do ask. Um, I, I was going to do another option for choice field, but I think for now I could leave it. Uh, this other one is talking about dates. I'll share the presentation with you. And if you have any specific question, uh, you can go ahead and ask me. But I think what I'm more interested in uh, right now is. Um, is doing the code book for the remainder of uh, the presentation because this is uh, a quite important as it were. Not to say that the others are not um, are not important. Um, for the others, for the other skills, we can of course build on them um, later on. So, so um, let's let's go ahead and. Uh, Look at a uh, code book. I know this is what most people would be interested in uh, in learning how to do. So um, it is often good practice to develop a code book for your data file. Remember, you're going to go and collect data for your project. Um, there will be certain times that you have someone else doing the analysis. They always don't need to call you and say, okay, Warren, what does the variable uh, num, n u n mean, right, and, and things like that. So they, so they're wondering what those variables mean, especially if they haven't seen the questionnaire. So what you need to do to avoid that is basically for you to develop um, a code book which provides the structure, contents, and layout for for your data file. So for a data file, generally we will usually contain one line for each observation or submission that is made to, um, uh, to your, for your data collection. So this, of course, could be information for a person or if you're observing any record before for your, for your record. And then um, each column in your code book will generally represent a single uh, variable. However, there are certain times that a variable can span several columns, right? So, so at the most basic level, a code book describes the data file and it also explains what codes are assigned to certain responses that you will have. And so as a researcher, you basically have to develop a code book for two reasons, maybe three. The first is that you want to provide a self-explanatory description of each variable in your in your data file, so that when someone else is doing the analysis, for example, if you're looking at subject data, you don't have to call the principal investigator and ask them uh, what a certain variable means, but the code book itself will explain what that variable means. You don't need to continue having that interaction. The second reason is that it provides responses for guided, coded rather, responses. It provides a guide for coded responses. So there are times that you download data and it has ones, two, threes, 99, and so on and so forth. And you wonder what those codes are. So the code book will explain what those variables are. And then it will also serve as documentation of the layout and the code definitions of your, of your data now. Um, so in essence, the general structure of the code book will include at a minimum, uh, these fields. So it includes an ID column, a variable name column, a variable category or group a column. It will include a question description, a question type, coding values, and labels. And we'll just briefly go through this just to explain and then what they are. 
So the first column, which is ID column, is simply a serial number column for the variables that you have. So what is the first variable, second variable, and so on and so forth. And then the second column is simply the variable name. So this is the unique name that is assigned to each variable in your data file. As we did say, you want each variable to have a unique uh, name to make it easy for analysis. And then you have your uh, variable category or group. Uh, so this could be a category or group um, that a variable belongs to. Uh, for example, if you remember last time we, looked, we talked about you know, grouping questions are based on a similar characteristics. So these characteristics could be demographic, they could be medical history, uh, they could be vaccination history, and so on and, 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 and so forth, right? And then you have your question description. This will basically display the exact wording that your question appears like uh, in, your, in your form. So if the question is, what is your age in the form, then that variable should have under the column uh, question description should have that exact way so that someone can know what that variable, um, where that variable relates to. And then you have the question time. So these are the, let's get the question classification that we looked at previously. So it could be an integer, select one, date, select multiple, a ranking, uh, and etc. And then you have uh, the coding values and variables. Um, these are basically the actual value values. So it could be one, two, three, and the contextual descriptions of those codes. So if one, yes, zero means no, or one, male, two, uh, contextual description, female, and so on and so on. And I'll just show you, um, um, and some of you may have already seen this. Um, so this is the, um, just uh, one moment. So this is the um, the Zantia code book, um, and and some of you are already familiar with this, right? So column one ID, a variable, a variable category, a question description, a question type, a coding values and labels and so on and so forth. So these are specific to, to the uh, Zamfia data that they, that they have. And you can see that, you know, for variable number one, it is called HD. Um, it is under the group category analytic. And the question is aging days, right? And then it's an integer and there's no coding for it because it's an open and then a response. Another example is, of course, uh, variable code. Yeah, it's a unique name, right? Uh, I'm sure it's based on something that um, uh, the principal investigator thought about. And it's under the group adolescent questionnaire module one characteristics. The question, as it appears on the form, please provide the reason this previous question was left blank. What level of grade are you in now? select one and these are the responses eight i don't know nine refused and so on and so forth so um we'll go ahead and um uh, and basically do the same for our our data to just basically develop a code book um, so that we can we can appreciate um, uh, this 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 more um so let's have a look see so uh, this is our form, but maybe before we start looking at the code book, do we have any question this far? Okay, looks like there is none. Okay, so I'll go ahead and just open a blank Excel. And then I'll save this file in not the best location in my downloads folder. Uh, what is the name of our form? COVID-19 vaccine happy. Uh, codebook. And then go ahead and, and save it. So usually this works better when you 
split your screen. Um, looking at that, so let's close that window. So that we have the screen side by side. So the fields that we had, if you remember, now in our presentation, we had ID, we had I just go ahead and copy this this thing there. And then I'll just split that by data. Sorry. Usually find think how we can do things. The delete I'm splitting is with a semicolon. And finish. So I have my ID, I have my I have my ID column, I've got my variable name, I've got my variable, let's call it group in our case because we're calling the groups, right? Question description, question height, uh, coding value. So this should be under the same. And then coding values and levels, right? So that's the basic um, structure for, for our code book. And then we can go one by one um, looking at our. So variable number one, the variable name. So we'll start with the introduction, right? We change by default. What Cobo Collect will do is just to get what you type here and paste it there. But we we'll have to change that. So we'll call that introduction. Usually variable name, right, right. Short, the shorter the, the better, right? We'll just call it um, just one moment. We'll just call it intro. Um, it looks better. Or if you want, you can put it in introduction. So that's the variable name for this one. Um, it doesn't have a group because these are not group questions. And the question description is just basically introduction as it appears here. So I'll just go ahead and just copy that and paste it there. Question type. So if you remember, this type of question is simply a not and it doesn't take any inputs, right? And then the next one is, um, hope you're following along, okay? The next one, it took exactly as we wrote it here, we'll type it as consent. And so that's the variable name consent. It doesn't have a variable group. As the question exactly appears, consent, perhaps we could have chosen a better option for it. And then what type of question is this? It's a select one, uh, select underscore one type of question. And then the coding values are this, right? So yes is one, so one equals yes. And then alternate enter. And so in, in Excel, you can go to the next line within the same cell by pressing alternate and then enter. So it doesn't go to the next cell, but within the same cell goes to the next line. And so on your keyboard, just press alternate and then you press enter and it goes to the next line. Then you have two, which is uh, your no. Then I press enter to the next line so that uh, they, both those rows can appear under the, under the same, um, um, in the same cell, but in different, uh, in different lines. So we are done coding this one, um, right? Then the next is, what is your name? So it's in another group. So we can change the variable name to name. So this is variable number three, name. Now this has a variable group. So this is a variable label. Remember what we talked about last time, this is a variable name, but the variable group is actually this one, which we also need to change so that it's, it's easier for us to know the group. So we can call this group as demographics uh, and and that is the variable group for name. And then we go to the specific question. Uh, what is your name? We are calling it as a variable name, name. And as the question appears, it's question number one. What is your name? 
So this is a text field, as you can see, ABC. Uh, so type of question is text and it's open-ended response, so we don't have any codes for it. Um, let me save that word. Yes. Um, question number two. Um, variable number four. What is your sex? It exactly gets that, and we just call this variable as sex. Um, it also belongs under the demographics group. Variable is sex, and then this one is select one. Um, so this is select one underscore question. So this is something that you have to decide when it comes uh, for you to use R. Um, so by default, it just gets what you have exactly there and puts it here. Uh, one for male and two for females, and you have one for male. Alternate, enter next line within the same cell, space female. And enter. So that's that's the coding, the coding, the one, the two, and the labels, male and female. Um, uh, we just make sure that we save our, our work. Um, how old are you? We can change that to the variable H, uh, variable number five. It is age, it is under the demographics group. How old are you? Question number three. One, two, three, it's an integer. Uh, and it doesn't have a coding because it's open-ended. Um, variable number six. What is your phone number? It exactly gets what you have there. We can just call it phone. It's a variable phone. Still under the demographics group. What is your phone number? It's also an integer and doesn't take any codes because it's open ended. What is your province? Remember, this we already coded it for in the first question, the first one we designed. So this the variable name is province. It's still under demographics. And it's question number five. It is select one. So um, I, I basically developed my own general rule, and this is not based on anything that I learned from someone, but uh, I find it easier. For the most part, if I have choices that are more than six or seven, I avoid using numbers to code them because it just becomes crazy to try and figure out what one is, what two is, and so on and so forth but instead just to leave them as they are. And an example is that of province. I know 10 is not too difficult. You can go ahead and code them as one and one and two and so on. Yeah, we can do that. But at least, uh, for example, that of uh, districts where you have over a hundred districts and you put them one up to hundred, that's just giving yourself headache. So you just leave them as, as they are. Or, Provinces, maybe we can stretch it. Um, we should do one, right? One, we should do two, we should do three, four, five, six, seven. I'm just using tab to go to the next uh, uh, eight, tab, nine, tab, ten. Right. Um, so I have one. Uh, central, alternate, enter to go to the next line, copper belt, alternate, enter to go to the next line, three, eastern, alternate, enter to go to the next line within the same cell, pull or puller, 
uh, how do I need to enter uh, how do I need to enter six uh, how do I need to enter seven northern how do I need to enter eight north West ten, alternate enter nine southern, alternate enter ten western, then enter. So I have everything will be in the same cell but on different line. Um, the cell that work number eight is uh, so let me. Collapse this by clicking on that arrow and then expand the districts. And so the variable name for district is district. Um, district. Still under the demographics group. Um, what is a district? Select one. And you just have to leave them the way they are. I think it's easier. Um, Chiwombo. So Chiwombo. Chiwombo. Is Chiwombo. And so on and so forth. And Chisamba. Is Chisamba. So on and so forth. That we can of course. Uh, Finish that at your own at your own time. Um, okay. And then you go to another group. I think this will be the last group we'll do. And the group this you've displayed basically how this score works. Right. Uh, so this one is section number B. Um, so maybe before I move on, so there's certain times that you want to put some notes on the side. Um, so that you can specify uh, if there any skip button. Um, so you can just say uh, skip uh, logic based on this. So that it's clear uh, where the skip variable is. Right. So that it's clear. Uh, when someone is reading your code, they know that you provided a skip logic that is based on uh, and that. Um, number nine. Number nine. Are you pregnant? Um, prig. The shorter, the better. Uh, prig. Uh, this is under what is the group? So it is this name here uh, medical underscore history. Remember, variable names uh, should be one word. Uh, even medical is still fine. But if you want to be uh, clear, you can put medical underscore history. That's a group name. What's the question? Okay, so it seems like we have field number six. So we need to. Um, so uh, 5A, 5B. So I don't have to renum renumber a lot of uh, a lot of things, right? Uh, that I, the problems and the issues I call them A and B. 5B. And then, uh, are you pregnant? Um, this is a select one. And it's a yes and no, I can just copy that. And it there. Oh, okay, we have another option, uh, So the yes, the one, the no, the two. And the don't know, usually you call it as, 
either is seven or eight, eight, eight. Uh, 99 usually is for refusal. Um, really, but it's, it's up to you as, um, as a PI for the project uh, to decide on your coding, right? Because you're going to define them. So no one, no one will specify you for and then them in a certain way. Um, so that's basically how you go about um, uh, developing a code book. Um, and let me just, uh, once I save this, uh, let, me, let me just show you how different it's going to be now. So if I download uh, this form and we can compare between what we had at first and with what we have now, um, so, For some reason, I don't to. There we go. Right. So I want to. Now we open it. Uh -huh. So I would like to compare with um, what we initially had, right? So if you look at the names now, uh, you can see that your your data has become plain. So you had your start, end, introduction, consent, group, and all these crazy names. But now your variable names have become um, short and clean and easy to work with. You have your start, your end, your intro, your consent, your demographics as your group, your name, your sex, your age, your province, and your phone, your province, your district, you have your medical history, your brigand, and so on and so forth. So that when you download your data, you'd already clean your, your variables and because these are now when you download your data your data file these are the variables that will appear under your your, your column headers for your data file so it becomes easier to work with as compared to having at least the default one that I created for you based on the the label for your for your question. Um, do we have any specific questions thus far? No questions? I hope people were able to follow along. Um, we are remaining with about 10 minutes. There were a number of other issues, other um, uh, formatting. Um, strategies that I wanted to show you, but um, I think we can learn those later on. Uh, for the most part, I thought, you know, uh, developing a code book was, was more important than just merely looking at uh, different ways of, uh, of formatting your, your questionnaire. Um, the last part, I just want to show you some resources, which uh, basically I found super helpful in uh, in my challenges of using Cobalt Collect. So I don't always have the answers to uh, some of the complex skip logic and patterns that um, are there. So if you go to your Cobalt Collect toolbox um, and you scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, uh, there's the support section. One option you can go to is to look at uh, you know support.cobocollect.org, which basically gives you an overview of how to design forms, how to deploy, how and all the different 
topics, right? You can read through them. Um, for example, um, most of the materials that I was showing in my presentation, I just grabbed them from here. So you have all your topics here, right? Ranking questions, calculating questions, question matrix, and it walks you through using the GIFs. Uh, if you remember the ones that I was showing in my presentation, how to add a custom logo. This is exactly how, how we did it. Right? Um, uh, if you remember last time we talked about including a response, uh, insert another question, um, it walks you through how to do it. Uh, and it's, it's much easier to learn. Uh, but there are other times when, and you can look at the different uh, topics that, that are basically are basically there, right? So there's getting started, there's creating forms, um, there's collecting data, there's managing data. Uh, and also couple collect on your computer and on your server, how you can go about the doing the more advanced uh, coding. So for the most part, if you you want to learn the basics of Cobalt, like everything that you need, you'll find it here. Um, but there are certain times that you want to do the more advanced uh, coding, then that's when you need to go to the forum. And so let me just go back to the home page. Um, one more time. There we go. Right. So there's what is called the Cobo Collect Community uh, web, uh, um, website. So these guys are super helpful. So this forum is basically made up of different Cobo users. And Cobo Toolbox has employed a full time employee who, within 24 hours, will provide a response to your question. Um, and for the complex question, skip patterns and things like that that I've often struggled with, I often go to uh, this forum. So before you post any question, you want to basically search and check and see if your question has not been answered before. Uh, you have to create an account. Um, I already have an account, and you can see these are some of the questions I've asked uh, and the responses I've got. And then you can you can search. You search if you think your question is not there. You Type it, um, um, right. Uh, I'm trying to remember how to type. Oh, there we go, a uh, new topic. You click on your topic and then you can type your question. They often encourage you to even add pictures to your questions and, and things like that. You add a topic, you add a category and, and things like that and then you create a topic. And then people will answer to, answer to it. Um, so I thought I'd share these two resources for you. Um, as you move forward in your, in your coding experience, uh, but for the most part, this is what I've, I've been able to come with when it comes to um, questionnaire design and informatic and things like that. Uh, I think I'll stop here and, and maybe take any questions if people have any specific questions. But as always, if you're designing your form and you want some help, um, you can reach out to me, you can reach out to the mentors as well. Um, we are all still learning and there are new things that we're learning, by the way. I think, yeah, I can end here. I'll stop um, recording now so that we could ask some questions.